we are going to start a new section today. So specifically, we're talking about 5.2. We're going to talk about polynomial functions. By the end of today, you're going to be calling them polyesial functions. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we did 5.1 yesterday. 5.1, we talked about quadratic functions and everything with quadratic functions. Um, and now we're going to say, well, quadratic functions are all well and good, but what if we had higher powers? All right, and we're not going to get too philosophical or religious right now, but today we will be talking about those higher powers. Um, so we're going to start with some definitions. I'm going to sling a whole bunch of definitions at you, like a, a gunslinger, but with definitions. I'm a definition slinger, uh, but don't worry. We'll have some pretty pictures soon. All right, today we'll be, have beautiful images. Let's start. For a polynomial function, f of x equals a sub n x to the n plus a sub n minus 1 x to the n minus 1 plus dot 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 plus a1 x plus a0. And then we've got a triple definition. But before I do the triple def definition right now, I just want to let you breathe because you might be panicking. That's a lot of letters. You might be panicking. Don't panic, right? This is just a general form for a polynomial, right? Let's say this is n could be 5. Maybe it'll be x to the fifth with a 2 in front. a sub n is just a number. n is just a number. And then it's a polynomial, so it has a whole bunch of different numbers. No, don't worry. It, it, all right, this is the worst part. This is the worst part, okay? Once you get through here, you're going to be swimming. You're going to be swimming up to the bright, beautiful morning. Okay? So hang on, Lexi. Just, just trust. I'm asking you to trust me just a little bit, okay? So we call a sub n, x to the n, the leading term. <laughs> So the, fir the, the biggest power is the leading term, okay? We call a sub n the leading coefficient. And don't worry, this is the worst part. It gets better. So the number in the leading term is the leading coefficient. And n is the degree, the biggest exponent. So let's just look at some of these. Okay. Let's skip ahead because we got some more things to talk about. Let's look at some polynomials that I've written down. Okay. So these are all examples of polynomials. But notice they don't have as many terms as this generic form. This is just the general form. Could have a whole bunch of terms, right? This only has one term. So the leading term is just the x to the eighth. x to the eighth is the leading term. All right, same here. The leading term is just negative x to the ninth. The leading term on part c, remember, this is not, it might not always be in general form. The leading term should always be the biggest exponent. So the leading term in c is this negative 4x cubed. In d, the leading term is just a 5t to the fifth. In E, the leading term is negative p cubed. It's just that biggest exponent term. Degree is just the biggest exponent, right? So degree here is 8, 9. Degree here is 3. Biggest exponent is 5. Biggest exponent is 3. That's all that is. And the leading coefficient is just the number next to the leading term. So like there's a hidden 1 right here. There's a negative 1 right here. Leading terms right here, so the leading coefficient is a negative 4, right? So just using the definition, and the generic form right here looks kind of confusing, but it's not as bad as it looks, all right? So let's, um, let's talk about n behavior while we're talking right here as well, okay? So 
we got Desmos time. We're going to talk about a new concept before we actually get into some examples. Um, don't worry. Desmos.com. Okay. Let's look at some polynomials. All right, let's say x cubed plus 5. What we mean by end behavior is what does this look like when we zoom out? That's what end behavior means. So if you zoom out all the way, oh my word, that's, that's kind of trippy. <laughs> if you zoom out a bunch, weird. What, what's happening to the function? It's zooming up on the right, and it's crashing down, 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 down to the left. All right, that's what we talk, that's what we mean when we talk about end behavior. And there might be stuff happening in the middle, but all we care about end behavior is what happens for a polynomial when we just, at the end. At the end this way, at the end that way. That's end behavior. So you can have more complicated polynomials. Um, you can have, let me reset our scale. All right, that's just one polynomial. You can have more complicated polynomials, like uh, maybe like this. All right, so this polynomial is doing all, this polynomial is going all over the place. All right, look at that blue graph. That blue graph is just jumping up and down, left and right. But for end behavior, we don't care about any of that stuff in the middle. If we zoom out, what happens? To the left, it's climbing to the sky. That's your left. To the right, it's climbing to the sky. That's the end behavior. It is, it does actually look like a W. Huh. Okay. So that's what we're sort of talking about here. And you'll notice some similarities, right? This is a fourth degree polynomial. And remember, if we talked about function transformations, if we put a negative in front, it should flip it upside down. And now it has different end behavior, right? With the negative out in front. Now to the left, it's dropping down. To the right, it's dropping down. We just flipped it. We'll talk a bit about that as well. If we add another term, it becomes a fifth degree polynomial. And now, look at it. Now it's a fifth degree polynomial. Now they're going opposite directions. Add another term, it'll be a six degree polynomial. Let's add another term. Six degree polynomial, what's going to happen? Well, now they're going the same direction again. Whoa! Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about with end behaviors. Sure, a bunch of stuff's going to happen in the middle. But just like the class, it just matters how you start and how you end. That's not true at all. It's not like that at all. <laughs> the middle matters very much in a class, which is where we are right now. <laughs> all right, so there's some really nice things about end behavior that we're going to talk about. So we're going to make a little table. This is like a woodworking class. And no, we're not playing tic-tac-toe. You can save that for later. Okay. What we're going to look at is if the degree is even, something happens. If the degree is odd, something else happens. Remember, n is the degree. I have that right here. If the leading coefficient is positive, we have a specific case. If the leading coefficient is negative, we have a specific case. Only four things can happen. Wow, that's exciting, Jason. Only four things. And essentially, the four things are going to either look like a parabola or a cubic function. Okay? So your end behavior, if you have an even degree, Think about even degree as like a, right? If you think about this as like a parabola, x squared. So if you have a parabola, your end behavior looks like this. 
So I put squiggles in the middle. The squiggles in the middle just mean we don't care what happens in the middle. We don't know what happens in the middle. But if you have an even polynomial with a positive coefficient, it kind of looks like a parabola. So I know all of you have a good guess of what happens if you have the same situation, but the leading coefficient is negative. You have the same situation, but leading coefficient is negative. Think back to function transformations. If you make it negative, it flips it upside down. All right. So it might look like something like this. We don't know what happens in the middle. But we know at the ends, it's plummeting to the depths of the earth. If it's odd, it kind of behaves like a cubic function. That was one of our toolkit functions. Right? Remember, odd, our toolkit function kind of looked like this. We don't know what happens in the middle. But to the right, it gets big. To the left, it goes down. And again, if it's negative, it just switches directions. All right? So, the worst of this class. Well, that's not true. The worst of today is over. Now we're just going to use all this information. And the more and more we use it, the more and more you will go, huh, this isn't too bad. Maybe Jason was right. Okay. All right. So let's get going again. <laughs> no, 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 Lexi. Lexi, I... Uh, this, this will be fine. This will be fine. Uh -huh. Let's do example one. Identify the degree. How you spell that word? That's not quite it either. The degree, the leading term. and the end behavior. You have trust issues because your math instructors always lie to you. Always lie to you and say, this will be easy, and it's not easy. And you cry. I'm ap I apologize if I'm contributing to that. Part A. Let's do those functions we were looking at before. f of x equals x to the eighth. So, I have an idea. Let's slightly edit. No, let's not edit anything. Nope. Idea? Garbage. Throw the idea in the trash can. Okay? So, remember that the leading term, or first we need to find the degree. The degree is the biggest exponent. Someone tell me the degree here. The biggest exponent out of all the terms. Yeah, you got it, Lexi. 100%. 100%. Just like the grade you're going to get on your next quiz. All right? Good. It's just eight. There's only one exponent to choose from. Degree is always the biggest exponent. Leading term is just the term that has that degree. Okay? Well, in this case, again, there's only one term, so it's just going to be x to the eighth. Okay, so we need to look at end behavior now. The leading coefficient is one, Gabe. Yeah, the term is the whole thing. The coefficient is just the number. The leading coefficient is one. So now we look at our table. And all right, I shouldn't have done this on the same thing, right? Our table. We say, is the degree even or odd? Well, we said the degree is eight. So eight's even. So we know our end behavior has got to be one of these two. Is our leading coefficient positive or negative? Well, Gabe said our leading coefficient's one. So it's positive. So even, positive, this is our end behavior. Kind of like a parabola. Let's check our answer. Wow, Jason. It makes me so happy when math 
lets you check your answer. Well, luckily for you, Jason, math lets you check your answer all the time. So let's do it. We said the end behavior should go like this. So does it? Graph it. I equals x to the eighth. Yep. Uh, yes, it does. Okay. So possible option, you are smart today. Other possible option, you're smart every day, and today is just a nice section like I said. Not that I'm upset. Not that I'm upset. Okay, so that's how you solve these. All right, so let's do it again with uh, g of x equals negative x to the ninth. You want the graph thing? There's the link. If you want to play with math at home, if you want to graph your, graph your night away, www.desmos.com. All right, you too can have as much fun as I'm having right now. <laughs> so let's just do the same thing. One of you tell me the degree here. One of you tell me the leading term. Someone else tell me the end behavior for this function. G, G of x equals negative x to the ninth. All right. Yeah, they pay me $5 for everyone who uses the site. I'm a professional shill. This is a lie. Not that I lie frequently. <clears throat> All right, so someone give me some stuff. Yep, nine is the degree. Degree is just the biggest exponent. Leading term is gonna be the term that has that biggest exponent. Again, we only have one term again. I like this encouragement that you guys have for each other, good. So leading term is just gonna be the whole thing, negative x to the ninth. For the end behavior, we have to look at, is it positive or negative? Yeah, good lane. And look at the degree. So what do we have? Is it positive or negative? Well, let's start with the degree. Degree is nine. So we're gonna be looking at this column. You guys can't see anything. We're gonna be looking at this column right here. And since it was positive, nope, it wasn't positive. Since it was negative, we look at this row. So we have this row, this column, this is our situation. Up on the left, down on the right. So it goes something like, kind of like that. Sound effects are optional. So we're gonna check our answer and say, is that really the end behavior? Does it really go up on the left and down on the right? Let's find out. Drum roll, please. It goes up on the left and down on the right. What a coincidence. What a coincidence. All right. So here we go. Let's do, let's do a harder one, okay? I don't want to bore you guys. I don't want to bore you guys with easy math. Part C. f of x equals 3 plus 2x squared minus 4x cubed. We say this is not in general form. Remember general form we talked about with polynomials because the highest power is not in front. But we don't need to put it in general form if we don't want to. It might make it a little easier though. It's up to you. All right, so again, what's the leading term? What's the end behavior? What's the degree? Um, tell me one or two things and then we'll go on. I don't even know what I said. I don't even know what I said that was bad. That's probably a bad sign when, when I feel that way. We'll go up to example four today. You wanna flip it around? Sure. So let's write this term first, negative four x cubed, and then plus two x squared, and then plus the three. Now it's in general form, which is usually a little easier to manage. And yeah, I think it's usually a good idea to rewrite it, Lane. Mm-hmm. 
Remember, degree is the biggest exponent. Leading term is the term that has the biggest exponent. And then we find the end behavior just like we did before. Yeah, it's a good question. Any ideas? Degree three, that's correct. Because this is the highest exponent. Mm -hmm. The leading term is the term with the highest exponent. So yeah, four, negative 4x four cubed, good. So we use this information to find the end behavior. The degree is odd, the leading term is negative. So consult our table. It's odd, so it has to be in this column. And it's negative, so it has to be in this row. We're gonna have the same situation, up on the left, down on the right. All right. So that's our end behavior. Now we check out our answer. Okay. The function is negative four x cubed plus two x squared plus three. Whoa! That has the right end behavior. Up on the right, down on the left. Sorry. Up on the left and down on the right. It's hard for me to do this because I have to mirror my motions while still saying the right thing. So I'm saying left, but I'm pointing with my right hand. It's very hard for me. Okay. <laughs> can you imagine how many, well, you probably can, your students. But there's a, there's a ton of professors that like, if you guys do well, then I make the next thing harder. I think that's terrible. <laughs> It's not my style at the very least, right? The goal is that I just decide what I want you to know. And if you know it, great. And if you don't know it, then well, that's not great. But I'm not going to like make the class harder because you guys are succeeding. Like punishing success. Hard D. Okay. So I don't do that. So feel free to be as, as smart as you want. G of T goes 5T. That's supposed to be a 5. Can I save this? 5t to the fifth minus 2t cubed plus 7t. So this is in general form. That's good. We know it's in general form because the exponents just get smaller and smaller. Side note, this is an odd function because all, it's a polynomial and all of the exponents are odd. This last one was not an odd function. Because even though this is an odd exponent, this is even. And this is technically even, x to the zeroth. Going back to function transformations and even and odd functions. All right, so it's in general form, good. We can find the degree. We can find the leading term. We can find the end behavior. And you guys know this well enough by now. Degree, biggest exponent, that's a five. Leading term is the term with the biggest exponent, 5t to the fifth, and then we'll find the end behavior. You could pull out a t, Lane. If you were trying to factor this, you would pull out a t. We don't need to factor it. We'll factor things later on in the section when we try to find x-intercepts, but just for this stuff, we don't need to. And in fact, solving these problems, it's actually a little easier when it's in general form like this and not factored. Again, general form just means like has all the terms by themselves and they go in descending order of degree of the powers. We have an odd degree and a positive leading term. So odd degree, again, this column, we're really using this column a lot. And positive, so first row, we're going to have this situation, just like a cubic function. All right. And I'm not going to check my answer for this one because I think, I think we got it. All right. 
I am proud of you guys, but I'm less proud of you. I'm still proud that you're getting the right answers, but it's less due to the right answers and more due to um, all of the participation. Teaching is a lot more fun when you guys are talking. Let's move on to example two. Example two, we're going to go backwards. Okay. We went forwards, and now we're going to go backwards. What do we know? About the degree and leading term of the following. You guys are actually a pretty good participation class. Um, my trig class, I like my trig class. They are, they're all very smart, actually. Um, but they, they don't type as much. So, let's do some problems like this. Let's go the other way. Let's say we got some polynomial that looks like this. So, what do we know about this? And specifically, we can use information that we know about end behavior. Okay. So you're going to want to consult your table. I did not call you dumb. Come on. Don't, put, put, don't be putting words in my mouth. It's odd and negative. Very close. We have this situation right here for our end behavior. So it's an odd degree, but it's the positive case. All right. Side note. So again, n is odd. A sub n is positive. Side note, to, kn to know... <sighs> Typo. Autocorrect. Yeah, nice game. <laughs> so... <laughs> yeah, I get typos on my exams all the time, too. To, to know what deg what, whether it's positive or negative, you can look at the sign on the right. If it's positive, notice that the right is always up. If it's negative, notice the right is always down. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we all need new keyboards, I think. Let's do part B. I just covered up part B. I can't find it anymore. Right. Look at this fun function. This is a funny, funny polynomial. It's almost flat. Like almost like a little mesa. I don't know the difference between a mesa and a butte. But it kind of looks like a mesa to me. So what what do you think this one is? I'm not gonna show the table. We know that they're going the same direction on the left and the right. We know that on the right it's going down. Same direction means it's actually gonna be even. Lane's computer is giving him some autocorrect issues as well. And then what is the sign? Negative. Good work. <laughs> it is odd, even, and negative. Hmm. <laughs> all right. Good. So that's all we're doing for that one. Example three. We're going to do example three and example four, and I think we're going to end a little bit early today. Uh, this section's not too bad. We can finish it up on Monday and start the next one. 5.3 is a little bit more involved, but... Oh, excuse me. So, what are we talking about? Example three. Example three is a little messier. Are you guys ready to do some algebra again? Because we've been taking a little algebra break. Express. The fu polynomial function f of x equals negative 3x squared times x minus 1 times x plus 4. Yes, that's what I like to see, Gabe. Bring it. That's the right attitude to have. Express it in general form. Remember what general form was, by the way. General form means all expanded out and in order. Okay, but this is not the end. 
if you were sad because you thought example three was too short, don't worry. Express it in general form and determine the leading, cof the leading term, the degree, and the end behavior. I am curious, does anybody know the leading term or the degree of this? If you can find the leading term and the degree of this polynomial function, that's really good. I don't really expect anyone to be able to, but if you can, it'd be nice. It'll be a lot easier once we write it in general form. The degree is four, yeah, good. Because mm -hmm. when you expand this all out, what's your biggest x going to be? It'll be an x squared times an x times an x. The biggest power is going to be x to the fourth. Mm -hmm. So what's the leading term going to be? Again, you don't need to be able to do this, but it will save you some time on the homework assignment if you can, and for like quizzes and stuff. <laughs> Lexi, what, what's the leading term? Uh, it won't be a 12. The, you will get a 12 when you end up multiplying this by that. But that won't be your leading term. Because the only way to get the highest power is multiplying... Because the leading term has to be on the thing that is x to the fourth. It's going to be this times that times this. Your leading term will be negative 3x to the fourth. <laughs> so that, that's kind of hard to get, but... You can learn the patterns if you do more of these problems. So either we have to express it in general form, right? Means we have to FOIL and put in the right order. That's what that means. Let's get to work. Let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. So you can distribute this in any order, but be very careful with how you do this. You have to do things one at a time. For example, you can't just say, well, the three is going to go here and here and here and here. No, 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 no. That's not the way it works. Okay. You can either distribute the three to this binomial first or multiply these two binomials first. But you have to do it one at a time. Have patience. Tengan paciencia. I don't know if that's correct Spanish, but those are Spanish words at any rate. So what do we have here? Let's, let's FOIL first. Let's keep that negative three X squared well behaved. And then let's FOIL these binomials. Okay, X times X is X squared. X times four is four X. Negative one times X is minus X. Negative one times four is minus four. And now we have two options. Choices. Don't you appreciate the freedom that a math class gives you? We can either collect like terms now or FOIL now or distribute now. I would like to collect like terms because that means less, less work later. So let's, let's clean up the inside. Again, life pro tip from your math instructor. A lot of times it's better to clean up now and you have less cleaning up to do later like cleaning while you're cooking. Good strategy. Okay, so we have x squared plus a 4x minus a 1x is plus a 3x. And then we still have the minus 4 at the end. We're almost, well, we're halfway done. Again, we need to put it in general form, which means it needs to be all multiplied out. So now we need to distribute the heck out of it. So the negative 3x squared is going everywhere. Negative three x to the fourth, we multiply it by this first term. Multiply these two, we get negative nine x cubed. And the last term is negative three times negative four, that becomes a positive 12. And then there's still an x squared. So if you were to guess that the leading coefficient was 12, you'd be wrong. But you would be correct if you said the trailing coefficient is 12. I'm pretty sure that's a made-up math definition. Okay. So, exactly. Yep, very good. The degree is going to be 4. The leading coefficient is negative 3. 
Although uh, I, I did use an abbreviation. It is asking for the leading term, which is the whole thing. So the degree is four, highest exponent, just like Erica said. The leading term is the term that has that degree. The term that has that exponent, that's this whole thing. Negative three X to the fourth. The leading term is just the negative three, or the leading coefficient is just negative three. Right, leading coefficient is negative three. And then for the end behavior, we look at the degree, we look at the leading term sign. It's even, so they go the same rate, same way. And it's negative, so they both go down. Yeah, Lexi, we did already say that. Um, I'm more so asking again, because the problem is asking you to do multiple things. Put it in general form. That's this. And then determine the leading term and the degree. We already did that, but I'm writing it down. And it's usually easier to find the leading term and the leading coefficient once you have it in general form like this. And then we didn't talk about the end behavior yet either. Mm -hmm. If you, again, if you can find the leading term in the degree when it's in this form, that's awesome. But it's much harder. Depending on whether you can see it or not. If you can see it, then it's not hard. But if you can't, obviously it is. So our answer is all of this. General form, degree, End behavior, leading term, a giant answer. Rock climbing, by the way, is super fun. I want to do more rock climbing. I'm thinking about taking the rock, rock climbing class that the college is offering in the fall. I think it'd be pretty great. I've ne <sighs> some rock climbing walls, like indoor rock climbing, because I don't like outdoor rock climbing scares me. But indoor rock climbing, you have this sort of thing. Freaks me out. <laughs> anyway, any questions so far? Before we do, a little bit more. Oh, that's awesome, Monet. I've gone bowling with the bowling instructor. Gabe, go ahead and ask your question. He's also the guy who teaches Spanish at the class. He's a pretty cool guy. He was fun. His name is like Jim Gustafson or something. I don't know. I like rock climb, indoor rock climbing because it's very exhausting. And I like sports that are fun and exhausting. I've only gone outdoor rock climbing once, and it, it terrified me. I was so scared. I'm scared of heights. Are you going to ask your question, Gabe? I don't, think I, I don't know if I've ever eaten at a bowling alley. Yeah, that's where the class is, Erica, at the rec center. Gabe's question is, how much wood can a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Nice. We'll leave that as a homework problem. <laughs> Let's move on. We got some more definitions for all of you guys. This is a wonderful section for definitions. All right. So let's say we have some kind of polynomial. Maybe it looks like this. Who knows what it looks like? Let's say we have some kind of polynomial. Good food at the bowling alley? I'll have to try it. Fried pickles? What the heck? You're making this up. Fried pickles sounds like one of the most disgusting things I've ever heard of. You guys are weird. So, we already talked about a few things for these polynomials. Right? Like these things. We know what these are. These are zeros. All right, I'll try them. I'll try them next time I go. I probably won't like them, but I'll try them. Is it zeros or x-intercepts? We've already talked about these. All right, and we've already talked about y-intercepts as well. Ha. 
<laughs> Microwaved eggs are better than fried pickles, okay? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> you do have you do bring up a fair point. A fair point. I'm not a culinary expert. I tried making some pizza with no yeast using baking powder. It tastes terrible. I just drench it in sauce and hope I can't taste it. All right, there's one new thing. Because, right, you, you say, Jason, we already know these definitions. These definitions are as familiar to us as fried pickles. Give us the new definitions, Jason. All right. The new definition is this guy up here and this guy down here. These are known as turning points. So notice the interesting thing about turning points. These are the hills and the valleys. Top of hills, tops of hills, bottoms of valleys. And these are what are also called local minimums and local maximums, um, also known as local extrema. But here we're going to be talking about them as turning points. All right, we're going to talk mostly about turning points on Monday. We're going to do one more example that, sadly enough, does not involve turning points. This next example, though, it might be a head scratcher. Okay? But luckily for you, I don't know where I'm going with that. Let's go. I have to, we have to finish this class so I can stop thinking about fried pickles. Find the X and Y intercepts. Part A. F of X equals X minus two times X plus one times X minus four. How do we find the x-intercepts? How do we find the y-intercepts? What's the attendance question? The attendance question, go ahead and answer this right now. Do you think fried pickles are good or garbage? Okay, that's the attendance question for today. Fried pickles, good or garbage? Oh my word. And then think about how you would find the x and y-intercepts here. All right, send it to me in Discord, Gabe. So watch it. You're going to see some magic happen here. Are you guys ready to see some magic? The x-intercept is when y equals 0. So this is y. When does this happen? Well, let's see. This, to find when a polynomial is equal to zero, you gotta, you gotta factor it, and then you gotta... It's already factored. It's already factored. Our work is done. Principle of zero products, here we come. These, this answer is easy. The x-intercepts are easy right here. What are the x-intercepts here? What an easy problem. I, I fooled you guys. I made you think this is going to be a hard one, huh? Not a hard one, right? No one's going to give me the x-intercepts. Thank you, Lexi. Two, negative one, and four. Good. Got a little worried there for a second. It's already factored. Use principle of zero products, right? Like each one of these becomes an equation. When is x minus four equal to zero? Add four to both sides. Get x equals four. You could do that for all three of them. All right. So the other one is the y-intercept. Remember the y-intercept is when x equals zero. So when x equals zero, what do we get? We get y equals, just plug in zero. Zero minus two times 0 plus 1, times 0 minus 4. This isn't that hard either, right? 
This is negative two. This is positive one. This is negative four. Multiply all those together, what do you get? Positive eight. Whoa. That's our y-intercept. Not too bad. And even part B, part B is gonna be a, part B is just gonna be the teensiest bit not as good. This is the smallest bit not as good, but even part B is not that bad. All right, that's what the B stands for in part B. It stands for not that bad. Not that bad. All right, so. Oh no, I don't wanna use another paper. We gotta save the, save the Wyoming forests, the Rock Springs forests. You ever wonder why there's so few trees around Rock Springs? Because math instructors use too many pieces of paper. Okay, let's do part B. G of X equals 2X cubed minus 6X squared minus 20X. B stands for the B in NBD. No big deal. All right. So we just do the same thing. Oh, this one's not factored. All right, no problem. X-intercept is when y equals 0. That's when 0 equals 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 20x. And say you say, oh, this is easy, Jason. We'll just use the quadratic formula. No. Don't, you can't use the quadratic formula on here because noticeably, it's not a quadratic. Okay? So no quadratic formulating with you is a cubic. But we can still solve it by factoring. And before you go, whoa, I don't like factoring cubics. Remember, it's not that bad. Look for the greatest common factor first, and then just do a couple more steps. Take out a two, yep, and an X. Uh-huh. So the, the GCF of the number parts is two, and then they all have an X as well, and that's gonna make our lives a lot easier. So we take out a two X, and we're left with just an X squared on the first term, because we lost the two, and we lost an X, so it's just X squared. This one, we lost the two, so it becomes a three, and we lost an X, so it becomes an X. Minus, we lost the two, it's now a 10, we lost an x, there are no more x's. Well, aren't we lucky? What are we left with? We're left with a nice, well-behaved binomial, trinomial quadratic. We can factor this easy way. So remember, if we're factoring in this 2x, it's sitting out in front, it's just patience. Patient, the 2x is patient. All right, we just need to factor the inside. We need something that multiplies to negative 10, that adds to negative three. You're gonna get uh, plus two, minus five. All right. And it's factored. Just as easy as one, two, three. So we know our x-intercepts, but be very careful, by the way. I'm gonna warn you now. If you want, if you're taking, that's supposed to be a star. Be very careful right here because a lot of people don't know what to do with this X. Use the principle of zero products, right? This is true when this term equals zero, when two X equals zero. There is a solution for this. Divide both sides by two, you get the X equals zero. So that's one of our answers. And then again, just like before, x is negative 2 and positive 5. All right, so just be careful with that first term. And then we also need the y-intercepts. Y-intercepts, super easy here, unless they're not. Y-intercept, remember, is when x equals 0. You just plug in 0. You get g of 0 equals 2 times 0 cubed minus six times zero squared minus 20 times zero. Everything's getting multiplied by zero. The y-intercept is just y equals zero. 
And that's it. Okay. We'll finish this section on Friday. I hope you have an amazing weekend. Hope you have a good weeding, weekend full. Good weeding? A good weekend full of fun and math. Remember, you have two homework assignments due on Tuesday. That's what the two stands for in Tuesday. So get started on those. Ask me questions over the weekend. I will be overjoyed to talk mathematics over the weekend, okay? So if you have questions, feel free to let me know. And uh, adios.